On today's show, I'm going to be giving you five surprise cut candidates for the New York football Giants as they will be having to trim their roster from 90 to 53 in the next couple of weeks. You're watching Giants Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green, and this year in 2023 for the NFL, it's a little bit different than it has been in the past couple of years because in the most recent years, you had to cut down your roster almost after every season, every single preseason game and get to a certain number. But that is not going to be happening this year. There will be just one firm date to reduce the roster from 90 players to the initial 53. This year, it will be on Tuesday, August 29th. And I know this, for the players the Giants cut, all the players that they move on from and keep, we are going to be making a video about it because when the Giants make a move, we make a video. We might be putting out multiple videos on that Tuesday. So subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss it when the Giants get down to the, their official first 53-man roster. Let's start with the player that was drafted by the Giants a couple of years ago in the mid-rounds of the draft. He was a free agent, and they brought him back this cycle. What about O'Shane Zimenez? the edge rusher. This is a player that I think is on the roster bubble right now, and we kind of saw why in the first preseason game against the Detroit Lions. He doesn't bring much, much pass rush pop. He's not good in the run game. He consistently gets washed down. But the Giants brought him back, and whether it was because they had someone still in the building that had a really strong draft profile grade on O'Shane Zimenez coming out of Old Dominion, or whatever it may be, he is back, but I'm not sure it will be for long. And if the Giants move on from him, they will save almost $1 million on the cap. You take a look, though, at this front four and really the outside linebackers as well. I would say right now, O'Shane Zimenez is that third outside linebacker. I'll say fourth if you want to include Jihad Ward in that discussion. I see him more, though, as an edge in a 3-4. But you saw Timon Fox looked really good for a UDFA in the first preseason game. He looked better than O'Shane Zimenez. I also thought the UDFA in 2023, Baldonado, looked better than him. He had two sacks, except one of them got brought back due to an unnecessary roughness because he slapped the quarterback in the head. But you saw the pass rush pop. You saw the ability to bend the corner and get pressure on the quarterback. And that's what you want, something O'Shane Zimenez has not been able to do through the first four years of his NFL career. Let's go from the edge of the defense to the secondary. What about Bobby McCain, the do-it-all safety? He can play strong safety. He can play free safety. He can come down in the box, and he can play a little bit of slot corner. I'm going to list him as a surprise cut candidate. We'll show the depth chart in a second. The Giants just have a lot of good young players at that position, and I think that he could be on the outside looking in. A way that he could stay on this roster is maybe get a little bit more slot cornerback reps, as that is a position that I am extremely worried about for this defense. But you look at the safeties, and you know Xavier McKinney is going to make it. You know Jason Pinnock is going to make it. You know Dane Belton is going to make it. So you got three safeties already locked into this position group. It's really going to come down to Bobby McCain versus the seventh-round rookie out of the University of Houston, Gervarius Owens, someone that I am a big fan of, someone that has popped off the screen for me when I've watched this team in training camp as well as the preseason. He was all over the field against the Lions. I like Javarius Owens, not because I think right now he's a better football player, because he's younger and has more upside, and I just think he fits what the Giants need a little bit more. Would not be shocked if Bobby McCain made the roster, but I am keeping my eyes out for him on that roster bubble. Let's stay in the defensive back room, and let's go to the corners this time, and let's talk about Amani Oruwarie, the free agent acquisition for the Giants. Spent the last couple of years with the Detroit Lions, and he has not had a great training camp. And if the Giants do move on from him, they save just over $1 million. Uh, kind of got roasted in the joint practices against his former team in the Detroit Lions. He's had some really high highs in the NFL. Had a, some years with a lot of interceptions. But he's always been someone that's been beat deep. And he's someone that's very handsy. And he draws a lot of flags on that side of the field. And with the Giants having a good number of outside corners that they like, like a Dory Jackson, Deontay Banks, the rookie Trey Hawkins. I'm not sure that Amani Oruwarie will make this roster, especially if Aaron Robinson is able to get off the pup and be ready to go week one. I think it'll come down to Rodarius Williams versus Amani Oruwarie to see which corner 
makes this roster as they round out the 53. We'll get to more surprise cut candidates in just a quick second. But first, I need you to get hooked up with our proud sportsbook partner, BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. And when you use this promo code, chat125, they are going to match your initial deposit of up to 125%. So if you put 100 bucks into your account at chatsports.com slash bet and use that promo code chat125, you're going to have $225 to bet with. You can bet on the preseason. The season is right around the corner. There's a lot of times for you to win money. So take advantage of it. Chat to bet us, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code chat125. Let's talk about the backfield and the running backs. I think the Giants are only going to keep three running backs. And the guy that I would say outside of those three that is most likely to be cut is James Robinson. He just did not impress me in that first preseason game. And we've heard throughout camp that he just has not really had that pop and that burst and that speed that he once possessed for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We saw why the New England Patriots signed him earlier this offseason and released him just a month later. The injuries have caught up to him, and they have started to take some of his powers away from, really, the former rookie standout running back a couple of years ago. You look at this position group for Big Blue, you know Saquon Barkley is going to be the RB1. They really like Matt Breida. They brought him back this offseason. He had some really pop plays for the Giants last year. They selected Eric Gray in the fifth round out of Oklahoma. Wasn't too impressed with him either in that first preseason game. We saw the short area quickness, and we saw the ability to run through arm tackles, and I liked what he did in the kicking game as the punt returner and kick returner, but the lack of speed really popped off the screen for me. We knew that that was an issue going into the draft, and once the Giants draft him, we said time and time again, he didn't have that straight long speed, and that kind of showed up on tape against the Lions, but I still believe that there is an NFL player in that body. And honestly, if the Giants keep four running backs, I would rather them hold on to Jay Sean Corbin, the UDFA out of the 2022 draft from Florida State over Robinson. Corbin, he's explosive. We saw him rip off that 30-yard run, run, and what I really liked about him was not afraid to step up and get in the way of somebody on those passing situations. Had some really good pass block plays for the Giants in preseason game number one. I was impressed from him, not so much from James Robinson. A player that I did not want to put on this list, but I had to as he crushed my hopes and dreams of us finding the next Victor Cruz, Bryce Ford Wheaton. I just do not see a way that Mr. Ford Wheaton makes this team after he had two drops on Friday, was flagged for an offensive pass interference, and really didn't show you anything. Giants would save about a half a million dollars if they do move on from him. But it's more so to do with the numbers the Giants have at the receiver position than Bryce Four Wheaton being a player that deserves to make this roster. Because Isaiah Hodgins is going to make the team. Darius Slayton is going to make the team. Paris Campbell is going to make the team. Jalen Hyatt is going to make the team. That's four guys right there. I believe Cole Beasley is a lock to make this team. Why else would the Giants bring some veteran receiver in midway through training camp, and at the very first practice, have him practicing with the number ones. Why would they have someone taking reps away from young players on this team if he wasn't even going to make the team? And I thought he looked really good in the first preseason game. So that's five wide receivers, including Cole Beasley. And I didn't mention Wandale Robinson, who it sounds like he's not going to start the season on the pup list. So that's six wide receivers right there. And I think they're going to keep Sterling Shepard. And I like Jamison Crowder um, a lot more than Bryce Ford Wheaton. So I think, unfortunately... For all of the Bryce Ford Wheaton fans out there, his career is not going to get off the ground. But I could see a spot where he ends up on the Giants practice squad if he does not get you know, signed by another team in the NFL. I'll ask you, though. I'm typing my N for no. I want to hear from you. Is Bryce Ford Wheaton going to make the Giants roster? Will he be one of the six or seven receivers to do so? Type Y for yes. Type N for no. I'm curious what all of Big Blue thinks. As always, I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate you for tuning in to Giants Now. If you want to talk more football, more Bryce Ford Wheaton, more New York Giants, hit me up on Twitter right here, at Marshall Green underscore.